Now we're going to build the shelves that put the carcass together. Now I've already mentioned that I wanted the sides made out of solid wood. The shelves and the top and bottom and so forth, that's either going to be made of plywood or particle board. Now, why don't we just use solid? The bigger the panel you make out of solid wood, the more likely it's going to twi twist and bend and, and curve and do weird things. So any part that has to deal with the structure, the carcass is what we're talking about, we want out of plywood or some kind of composite material that isn't going to expand and contract a whole lot and twist and change sizes. Now because you're not actually going to see the top, uh, it's going to be covered with the lid, we make that generally out of particle board and we do what's called a web frame. We don't do one gigantic piece in the top, we make it hollow, saves money and it's just as strong. Now the bottom of course, here, this piece that goes along the bottom, I'm going to see that. I'm going to open the doors and I'm going to see this, so I want it to be a good piece of plywood uh, matching whatever wood I'm using for this project. So here's how it's put together. Uh, the easiest way to understand this is if we erase a lot of this, these face frame parts, let me kind of redraw some of these things. How it's put together is with dados and rabbits, so I'll do this side. The side is only three-fourths of an inch thick, so that comes down like that. So I've essentially just pulled off this face frame and then that'll come across and so forth. It'll be the same on the other side. And this piece will come across as well. Okay. Okay, now I do have another piece that'll come down the middle, which we'll deal with in a second. So, first the top one, the, the web frame on the top. This piece and this piece are put together, it is not a butt joint, just two things butted together and screwed together. We're going to use what's called a rabbit. If I did just an exploded, if I made this bigger, exploded view is what it's called. There it is, there it is. My web frame sticks into the side in this little ledge. It's called a rabbit joint. If it was in the middle, it would be called a dado joint, and that's going to be down at the bottom, which we'll get to in a second. But that's it, a simple joint, but this little ledge gives it a lot of support and a lot of strength. So before I erase that, what are the dimensions? This piece here to here is three-fourths of an inch thick. That's going to be my standard thickness for pretty much everything. This joint uh, here to here, is one-fourth of an inch deep. So now if this piece is three-fourths total, but I only come in one-fourth, if I draw that a little more to scale, that might help. There we go, there to there. All right, if this joint only comes in one-quarter inch, how much is left? What have I got left right there? Three-fourths minus that one-fourth is one-half. So if I draw that tiny up here, but if I draw it there, I'll have a half an inch of extra wood right here. That will also happen on the other side. I'll have a half an inch there. So I already know that the total width of this project from left to right is 48 inches wide. Okay, if that's a given, if that's 48, I subtract a half an inch on both sides. 48 minus a half twice would be 47. So I know that my web frame, this frame that goes at the top, if I draw it here, it's going to be small, but it looks like this. If you're looking directly down on top of the project, this is what the web frame is going to look like. I already know that it's going to be 47 inches wide from left to right. I know that that's going to be my total when I'm done. Okay? Now, how about this piece from here to here? How big is that? I already know that my project is 18 inches deep total. Now there's two things I've got to subtract from that number. Number one is the face frame. The face frame goes on top of it. When I said 18, that included the face frame, so now I have to subtract it. Face frame is 3 fourths of an inch thick. 18 minus 3 fourths is 17 and 1 fourth. Okay, so we have that. So the other thing that we need to subtract for is the rabbit in the back. When we put this whole thing together, we're going to put a quarter inch thick back in, in set into the back in a rabbit, similar to what I just drew here. Uh, it'll be a rabbit joint, so it'll inset. So you're actually going to lose another quarter inch from the total. All right? I know it's hard to understand until I actually show it to you in the shop, so, but understand we're losing three fourths of an inch for the face frame and one quarter inch in the back. What is three-fourths plus one-fourth? Again, it's one. 
So whatever my total depth is, subtract one, and that's how wide, how deep, how far uh, from the front to the back it has to be. So now that's going to be 17. So I know when I am done, I need a face, or excuse me, a web frame that is 17 by 47. Okay. Generally, that's correct, and we're done with that. We'll, we'll break it down into its parts, but there's one other thing. Now, I have a center mullion here. I have a board here, and I'm going to have shelves in the cabinet and drawers over here and all that stuff, but I've got a board here. I would like to give it a little more strength if I could, so I'm going to put another board here in the middle. Now, whether you've got a board like I do or not, you can stick one in the middle if you like. It's totally up to you. It would give it a little bit more strength, but it's not necessary unless you have a piece in the middle like I do. I, I don't want that piece to shift and twist. So this will give me something to screw into it to keep it straight. Okay? So there's my size, 17 by 47. Now, when we build these things, we always want to build them a little bit bigger than they actually need to be, by about a quarter of an inch for the simple reason that when I put it together, there's no way that those joints are going to be absolutely perfect. They're going to be close, but I need them to be right on the money, and I don't want this to be crooked. I, I, I need a good, clean cut. So let's break this down into some parts. All of these are going to be three and a half inches wide when they're done, so we measure them as if they're three and a half inches wide. So all of these pieces are three and a half, all right? Uh, but when I cut them, I want them to be a quarter of an inch too big. So I add an eighth of an inch per side. Three and a half plus an eighth is three and five eighths of an inch. I'm going to circle that because that's what all of them need to be. The reason that we say in three and five eighths is because it gives me that extra quarter inch when I'm done. All right, so now all I need are lengths. I know that they're all three and five eighths of an inch. Now I just need to know how long they are. So I have two long pieces and three short pieces. Okay? So I know that they're all three and five eighths. And three and five eighths by some length. Now I know that my long ones are 47 inches long, but I want them a quarter of an inch bigger. So the frame will be bigger when I'm done. 47 and one fourth. There, now I've made them bigger. Now these, again, there's a little bit of math. I need the whole thing to be 17, okay? Now you need to do the dimensions as if it's ideal. Don't worry about the quarter inch yet. So if this thing, when I'm done, is going to be 17, 17 minus three and a half, what they ideally will be, 17 minus three and a half twice, three and a half and three and a half is seven. 17 minus seven will be 10, okay? Now, because these are actually three and five eighths, that will still give me my quarter of an inch extra. I measured as if they're ideal, but they're an eighth of an inch oversized, so I'll still get that extra. So these need to be 10, and that's it. This is a butt joint. They just butt together, and we're doweling them or screwing them together with pocket screws. It's just butted together, and that's it. All right, 17 minus seven is 10. Those are 10, and there is my cut list. And these, it's very important that these are all three and five eighths because my doweling machine is set to only accept three and five eighths wide boards. If they're actually three and a half, the dowels won't line up right. Uh, this joint will be way off and you'll have to cut off extra to get it to look decent, to look correct. So there is my cut list now for my frame. The bottom piece is going to be exactly the same size as this piece that we drew out. Now the only difference is it's going to be a full piece. It's not going to be hollow like this one. It's going to be a full sheet of plywood and we're going to chop it out. Now when you're using plywood, you don't have to cut it a quarter of an inch oversized. You can go exactly to size. Uh, with solids, you have to have a little extra or with these frames and so forth. Because once you cut it to size, that's it. There's no trimming later. So I know that it needs to be, and if I, let's go ahead and erase this to give it a place to draw. I'll need one base that is 17 by 47, and that one is this piece. This one is that piece. They will end up being exactly the same size. We just broke this one down into its parts because it's a web frame. It's a frame itself. The only other thing I need to worry about is going to be this center mullion right here. And I know I'm drawing it a little bit crooked, but you get the idea. There we go. 
And we'll just get rid of that line there. Now the thing about this center mullion is I don't mind it being a butt joint here to here because we'll just put some screws in it, but I like it to be a dado joint here in the base, right there. So this base comes out. That'll keep this from moving left and right. This one I can just swing into place and just pin it or, or put some screws in it. So this piece, it's very important that it's got to stay there. I don't want it to ever move. <clears throat> So here are your measurements. If this is 36 inches tall, from there to there, I have to do a little bit of subtracting, okay? So the center measurements are going to be um, 36 minus 3 fourths on the top, minus whatever the distance is from the actual floor to here, minus a half an inch. That's this, that's a half an inch. Remember, all of my dados are a quarter of an inch deep, and that whatever's left is a half. All I need to figure out is the distance from there to there. The other thing you could do, which you may find easier, and that's totally up to you, is I already know that the distance from here to the floor is four inches. Get rid of that. So I know I've already got four inches there to there, from the floor to the top of this shelf. All right, we figured that out when we did our face frame. That is one of my standards, so that doesn't change. So the math is now pretty simple. 36 inches total minus four, okay? So I'm kind of coming in on it. 36 minus four is 32. So I know it's 32 inches from the very top of this to the very top of that. Okay, so 32 inches, I have to subtract 3 fourths of an inch. That'd be 31 and 1 fourth and add a quarter of an inch that it goes into the dado. Okay, so 31 and 1 fourth plus another quarter would be 31 and a half. So this piece would be 31 and 1 half inches long, that one right there. So I know how tall it is. The depth, how far back, is going to be exactly the same as this and the shelf. They're both going to be 17. They're both 17, so this one is also 17. So it's one piece that is 17 by 31 and a half. It's getting awfully crowded here, and that's that. So what I would do, if I was, if I was a student, I would now, because this is hard to read, I would take a separate piece of paper and just write it out. I would just write one piece 17 by 47, one piece, you know, and write all this, or two pieces 3 and 5 eighths by 47, and write it all down in a list. Make sure you label what it's made of. This one's made of particle board. This one is made of plywood, and so is this. This is plywood as well. So I'd have a section, plywood pieces, and draw it out. Particle board pieces, and draw that out. And so you know which is which and what you're doing with them. So once you have those dimensions, we take those in the shop and make those pieces. Once we have your sides and these shelves glued up, trimmed to size, then we can actually build the carcass and the structure of your project. The last thing that we need to figure out as far as frames or shelves is the ones that go where the drawers are. Now I only have three of those. The one on the top goes all the way, the one on the bottom goes all the way. So I need the inner parts. Now I took the last few minutes to kind of erase all the extra stuff so it's easier to see. And I drew these a little bit more to scale. They're not the one and a half anymore. They're actually three fourths, so they're going to be thinner. So we need to figure out what is the distance from each side so I can figure out my web frame. So if I draw another web frame, it's going to look similar to the other one, board there, board there, and two there. So same as that, just a little smaller. Now the depth is very simple. We already know the depth. It's got to be the same as this one. All the shelves in there have to be the same and so it's 17. So I can quick label that right now. 17 from there to there. Okay, done. It's the width that gets kind of tricky. So here's the math and on this one we're going to be dealing with a little bit of eighths of an inch. I know those are not fun to deal with but we have to in this case. Because I already know that the total width from left to right is 48 inches, I know that dead center right here is 24. Okay, that's a start. So at least I've narrowed down to here. I know I have 24 inches. Now half of this piece right here, this is three-fourths of an inch thick. 
half of three-fourths is three-eighths. So now I'm dealing with three-eighths. Okay, three-eighths to the very center. We'll come back to that in just a second. On this side, I know that my frame sticks into the side one-fourth of an inch. That's a given, that's the same on all of them, so it stays straight. So wherever the dado is, if I just put a notch here, I know that the depth of that dado is one-fourth of an inch, which means I have a half an inch left from the inside of the dado to the board. There's a half an inch. So whatever the distance is, from the outside of this to the center of that, I know I've got to subtract minus one-half of an inch. Great. On this side, remember we did the three-eighths. We're only going into that board a quarter of an inch, not three-eighths. Now a quarter of an inch is two-eighths. Half of the board is three-eighths. So all I need to do is we need to subtract one-eighth of an inch. So one-eighth of an inch. I'm at three-eighths at that line. I need to be in another eighth of an inch. That's where that eighth is coming from. So an eighth of an inch right there. So I know what it is from the outside to the center. I'm subtracting an eighth of an inch there to get my quarter inch. I'm subtracting a half an inch here because of what's left here. And I'll end up at my measurement, whatever that is. So it's 24 inches minus a half an inch is 23 and a half. Great, we've got this side figured out. 23 and a half minus that eighth of an inch. 23 and a half minus an eighth would be 23 and 3 eighths. there to there. I know we don't like eighths, but that's how the math ended up. We do want this piece dead center, okay? So now we can break this down into its parts as well. I need two, uh, excuse me, now I have three shelves, two, four, six, so there'll be six of each piece. Keep that in mind. So let's start again. Six pieces and six pieces. All right, so that'll get all of the web frames all figured out in two lines. They're all gonna be three and five eighths, just like before. There's your three and five eighths by 23 and three eighths plus another quarter. The same thing we did here. I still want that frame bigger. The five eighths, remember the three and five eighths will give me the width that I need, but I still need to add a little bit of length. So 23 and three eighths plus two eighths or a quarter of an inch, 23 and five eighths. All right, now we already know this depth that's going to be 10. It's exactly the same as this one. I know I erased it, but it was 10. So you can just write that down. 10. Again, write this on a piece of paper somewhere. Label it that it's made of particle board or whatever you're using. And then we can go in the shop and get that done. Now that we have all the parts to our carcass, now we can actually start building it and putting it together.